I feel so giddy, I can't stop smiling. Now that I'm 100% sure I've made it, I can finally tell you. Ah, I see. So today's the day I'll finally learn what you've been so excited about for the past few months. It is, and I promise once you know what it is, you'll think it was worth the wait. Whatever it is, it must be pretty special if it prompted you to move to some ghost town in the middle of nowhere. It's not a ghost town. It's more like a charming little community straight out of a fairy tale. The scenery is so captivating, I could stare at it all day. This news might give me the opportunity to do just that since I'll be extending my stay here. So what is this news about? I can't wait to hear all about it. Okay, brace yourself. Starting from tomorrow, I'll be interning at Vintage Breeze. Vintage fans that make an impression? What do you think? Isn't this great? That's a long name for a company. Oh, no, Vintage Breeze is the name of the company. The rest is just its slogan. Right, uh, of course. And what do they do exactly? It's right there in the name. It's a small company that sources and restores vintage hand fans. And they need an intern for that? Of course they do. Initially, the owner did this as a hobby, and then she turned it into a thriving small business. Sourcing fans from all around the world, restoring and repairing them, it's not really a one-woman job. It all takes a lot of time and effort. That's why they need employees and interns. Well, I'm very happy for you. I'm sure it'll be an interesting experience. I bet it will be. This is just the kind of creative break I need. No more figures and charts. It's time for my creative renaissance. Is that so? Do you have any prior knowledge or experience sourcing or restoring vintage items? No, but that's what the internship's for, right? They'll teach me on the job. I, I guess they might do that, but I still don't understand why you were picked in the first place. I mean, I've seen your CVs. They're not great. Hmm, I'm not sure. Maybe because nobody else applied? The job posting was a bit confusing. And it is an unpaid internship, so... Unpaid? Are you sure? Yes, I'm pretty sure. Why? What's wrong? It's nothing. I'm just a little surprised. You were famous for crusading against unpaid internships, and now you're doing one yourself? I guess I am. Please, try to be understanding, Tyler. Is it a crime to want to do something whimsical career-wise every once in a while? You can't get more whimsical than vintage hand fans. I'm sure you could if you really tried. But if that's really what you want to do, I wish you nothing but the best of luck. Thank you. I hope it all goes well. Ooh, I felt a chill go down my spine as I read that. The good or the bad kind? I guess we'll have to wait and see. I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. Please do. Hi. Hello. How are you? Hi. Hello. I'm doing fine, thanks. What about you? I'm sad. Oh, so sad. I'm guessing the internship's not going as well as you thought it would. Is it that obvious? Well, why else would you start messaging me in the middle of the workday? All right, yes, you're right. It's only been a week and I should probably be a bit more patient, but it's so hard. Why, did something happen? Nothing did, that's the issue. I sit at my desk all day twiddling my thumbs waiting for something interesting to happen. I offered to take promotional photos of the merchandise since I enjoy photography, but I got rejected. They won't even send me on coffee runs. Everyone's drinking water all day as part of this new company policy promoting hydration. So you don't do any work and you don't get paid. Are you sure you actually got the job? Are the people at the office looking at you like, who let this strange woman in here? Some of them are. I just don't know what to do. My head feels like it's going to explode. Have you tried discussing this with your supervisor? I'm sure she could help you out. My supervisor? I think my headache just got worse at the thought of talking to him. Him? Didn't you say the owner was a woman earlier? I did, yes. Erica's the owner slash CEO, but my direct supervisor is a man called Elijah, or should I say, Mr. Ward. Such a complex hierarchy. Don't tell anyone, but the rumors say he got the job by seducing the boss. Even now, if you stand at a certain angle near the stairwell, they'll get an unobstructed view of their favorite meeting spot. And there you'll see... Well, you can probably guess what you can see. Sounds like a disaster waiting to happen. I know, right? Shouldn't people who have something to hide be more cautious? Especially in a case like this when the boss is married. She is? Who knew office gossip could be this dramatic? I sure didn't. 
Anyway, there's no point in me talking to him. He's part of the problem. Also, I feel like he might be harassing me. Might be? Yeah, I can't really tell. He jokingly says something inappropriate, stands there in silence for a few seconds, then awkwardly laughs and walks away. And sometimes he sends me weird texts. How weird are we talking? This is what he sent me yesterday. You have a real talent for pretending to listen, Carla. Forget it. I'll just have Dawn get rid of it. When I asked him to clarify what he was trying to say, he left me on read. We don't even have an employee named Dawn. Oh, wow, that is weird. Maybe you should bring that up with his supervisor or HR. Do you have an HR department? Of course we do. I mean, it's just one woman sitting by the water cooler, but it's there. Okay, then report him to her. I don't know if I should. What if it's just his weird sense of humor? It's not like he's said anything wildly offensive to me. Also, our primary operations are mainly based in our warehouse. Our head office is tiny in comparison. Elijah and the HR ladies sit with an earshot of one another. I'm sure he'd hear if I were to start complaining about him. I understand, but you can't keep letting him make you uncomfortable. You should, at the very least, tell him how you feel. I'll think about it. Maybe I should try collecting some evidence first. Maybe I could stop ignoring his strange messages and see if he slips up. That sounds like a terrible idea. I know, but I'm going to do it anyway. New Carla's not afraid of being reckless. I miss the old Carla. Oh, come on, have some faith in me. Everything's going to turn out just fine. If you say so. Keep crossing those fingers. I will. My ear's been itching all day. Were you thinking about me, Carla? Yes, sir, I was. Oh, what exactly were you thinking about, if it's not a secret? Earlier today, I couldn't help but notice that your ears were looking awfully red. I thought you should probably get them checked out. That's very considerate of you. I'll do that. Are you free tomorrow? Huh? Why do you ask? I ask because I'll need a ride to the hospital tomorrow. Since you're the one who suggested that I go there, I figured you could drive me. Sorry, I can't do that. I don't know how to drive. I've seen your car. I've seen you drive to work. Oh, you must have seen my self-driving car. Unfortunately, it only knows how to take me to work, and then it's straight back home. I like it when women have a sense of humor. If your self-driving car is no good, how about we take my ordinary car? The only thing is we'd need to stop by my place for some old medical records. You know, to bring them along with us to the hospital. Since we'll already be there, perhaps we could open a bottle of wine to help calm our nerves prior to the appointment. You wouldn't mind that, would you? I've been meaning to tell you this for some time now, Mr. Ward. You should be more mindful about how you talk to your subordinates. You can't keep making crass remarks like that and expect us to be okay with them. Excuse me, what are you talking about? You were the one who suggested we should go to the hospital. I was only trying to help you take care of the mundane details. We? I don't remember saying I'd come with you. Sure, but that was the implication, wasn't it? Why else would you engage in a conversation about a topic as intimate as my ear health? You wanted us to grow closer through this experience. I most certainly did not. Are you implying that I misunderstood you? What's wrong? Why are you getting cold feet now that you've come this far? I don't understand what you're talking about. I'll ask you a yes or no question. You admitted that you were thinking about me, correct? Seriously? Yes or no. I'm not going to play along with this. If you have something to say, say it outright. You shouldn't lead people on, Carla. It'll bring you nothing but trouble. That's all I wanted to say. Are you threatening me? I'm warning you. This is just ridiculous. You have neither the status nor the power to threaten someone like me. Are you saying I can't threaten my own unpaid intern? Oh, I'm so scared. What are you going to do? Are you going to write a mean social media post with no evidence of any wrongdoing on my part? Because I will sue you for defamation. Oh no, anything but a lawsuit. Let's see if you are as bold after you've lost everything. I'll hire the best lawyers in the business. In that imaginary world where I write a mean post and you sue me? Don't underestimate me. I'm a hundred times more powerful than you think. Okay, well a hundred times zero is still zero, so... What are we going to do about that? You'll see. I can hardly wait. 
Hello, Mrs. Fisher, this is Carla, the new intern. Do you have a moment? I'd like to speak to you about something very important. Of course, what is it? It's about my supervisor, Elijah. He's been acting extremely unprofessional these last few days. Is that so? Can you give me some specific examples? I can send you the screenshots of his texts. Look. <laughs> Every interaction with him makes me feel stressed out. I'm not sure how to deal with this situation. And you thought asking me for help was your best option? I would have reported him to HR, but I can't seem to find the HR lady's number. The HR lady? Let me stop you right there, Carla. Have you discussed these concerns with your supervisor? I have. It's right there in the screenshots. As you can see, when I expressed my concerns, he didn't show any regret. Instead, he stood by his words and even went as far as to threaten me. I'd like you to know that I appreciate you bringing this to my attention. I promise I'll look into the matter. As you know, these things take time. While I'm deliberating on this, please try to be civil with Elijah. I'm sorry, but what is there to deliberate on? Isn't it obvious that he was the one in the wrong? Why do I have to keep treating him with respect? While I admit that some of his messages have been somewhat peculiar, I wouldn't say they crossed any boundaries. If anything, it seemed like for the majority of the conversation, you were the one who was out of line. How so? I tried my best to keep my composure. I'm sure you did try, but unfortunately that doesn't alter the reality of the situation. I hate to say this, but it takes two to tango. You willingly engaged in an improper conversation with your superior. You even encouraged him at times. Those kinds of responses should have been anticipated to some extent. Please tell me that you're joking. I assure you I'm being serious. Elijah's been here from the beginning, and to this day he remains a cherished friend of mine. I can confidently say that he's one of the most kind-hearted people I've ever met. You, on the other hand, seem to have difficulty recalling the name of our HR representative, even though you spent a week sitting across from her. I'm sure all this is just a huge misunderstanding. It'd be best for everyone if you let this go. So what you're saying is I should forgive him? You don't have to forgive him, just don't let your negative feelings towards him impact your behavior in the workplace. I'll talk to him and make sure he stops contacting you outside of work. So, let's just agree to forget this ever happened. And what if I don't want to forget it? What are you going to do then? Now I see what this has all been about, and who can blame you? Working without being compensated would take a toll on even the most devoted employee. How about we make you a paid intern? Okay, you don't want to terminate your treasured employee slash friend, I get that. What I don't understand is why you won't fire me right here, right now. Is me sitting at my desk sipping water really that essential to your business? Or are you perhaps scared that I'll sue you and make Elijah the talk of the town? What are you saying? I'm a responsible business owner who cares about each and every one of her employees' comfort and well-being. Is that so? Of course. All right, since you aren't planning on letting me go anytime soon, I'll go report him to HR. We just agreed you wouldn't do that. I never agreed to that. Perhaps you should reread our texts to refresh your memory. So what, you're going to smear an innocent man's reputation? I wouldn't say he's innocent. Do you remember what you told me during your job interview? You said restoring vintage fans was your dream job. You were so enthusiastic that I thought I was looking at my younger self. I did say that. Listen carefully. This is your last warning, Carla. Take the salary and keep your lips sealed, or you might actually end up getting fired. Okay, but I don't want a salary. I want you to give me a hundred dollar bill. After that, I promise I'll disappear from your life without saying a word to anyone about Elijah's behavior. Seriously, you only want a hundred dollars? What's the catch? Should it be covered in gold or something? What? No, are you saying I should be asking for more? No, no, a hundred dollar bill is okay, I can do that. Fantastic, we've got a deal. Happy birthday! Pretend you just heard a party popper go off. Thank you. Where have you been, Carla? I haven't heard from you in ages. You're being dramatic, it's only been three months. Did you miss me that much? I missed you an appropriate amount. 
But really, where have you been? Is the world of vintage fans really that captivating? Oh, I'm not doing that anymore. Unfortunately, that company went out of business. Huh? Why? You haven't heard? You're making me feel upset, Tyler. Do you really care so little about me? I'm tempted to take back the birthday gift I sent you. I'm sorry, I've been swamped with work. I'm sure you understand the struggle of setting aside time for personal matters. I humbly request that you reconsider taking back my gift. All right, since today's your birthday, I'll graciously accept your apology. Thank you very much. So what happened to Vintage Breeze? Oh, it was awful. A freak accident caused them to lose their entire inventory of vintage hand fans. A freak accident? Uh, yes. Some deranged pyromaniac set their warehouse ablaze. Luckily, there were no casualties. That's unfortunate. Uh, the fire, not the fact that there were no casualties. I know, I know. So the pyromaniacs, were they ever caught? No, those hoodlums got away with it. Can you believe that? The world is an unjust place. Mm-hmm. I gather it wasn't as whimsical of a workplace as you'd hoped it would be. You're so quick to catch on to things. I played the part. I tried so hard to do everything the way I was supposed to. Just like any other employee. But I guess it just wasn't the right fit for me. Because of your supervisor? What was his name again? Elijah? Whatever happened to him? I have no idea. The last I heard of him, he was in the hospital after getting into a fight with Carla's husband, who had anonymously received photos of them cozying up to one another at work. A mild punishment for a mild crime. I'm starting to get concerned about your definition of mild. Don't mind it. Anyway, that was that, and now I'm once again out of work. No worries, I'm sure you'll find something else to occupy your time with. What I need right now is a long overdue vacation. You and me both. Oh, that gives me an idea! I have two weeks of paid vacation this December. Where are we going? The Alps or the Maldives? Hmm, I'm leaning towards the Alps. Great, it's settled then. See you in a few months. I'll make sure to mark my calendar. It's been three years since Vintage Breeze closed down. It's fascinating how a simple mishap can swiftly destroy an entire business. Nowadays, you'd have a hard time finding any remnants of the once thriving company. It's almost as if it never existed at all. As time passes, the memories of my time there feel increasingly distant. The only thing I can vividly remember is paying one last visit to our warehouse the night I drove out of town. I remember standing in front of its charred remains, looking up at the twisted metal beams that once supported the roof and mourning the loss of the dream I'd built up in my mind. Oh well, that's life. The upside is that I gained a valuable lesson from working at Vintage Breeze. When life hands you early retirement on a silver platter, you take it and enjoy it to the fullest. Look at the time. Tyler should be here any second now. I have to go and get ready. I finally convinced him to go ice skating with me. How exciting is that?